Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. It's Shirley with the Voice of Peace broadcasting from uh, Israel about the new 2030 event with Israel and Iran. And this is a little bit about the synastry, the love synastry between Iran and Israel. So this is just a little bit of mundane astrology so that you can understand um, the connection between these two countries and why we're basically treating the level of analysis of 2030 agenda, globalistic agenda, WHO agenda and WEF agenda, and not national uh, uh, welfare. So first of all, Israel's sun is conjuncting the moon of Iran. For those of you who do synastries in astrology, um, <laughs> if you are aware to the sun to my moon, kind of, <laughs> this is the astrology of lovers, okay? This is the astrology where the solar figure um, it inspires the lunar figure, and the lunar figure caretakes for the solar figure. Um, so this is not relationships of anything but nourishment. The lot of fortune of Iran is on speaker, which is marvelous. Uh, and the ascendant of Israel is two degrees from speaker, um, conjuncting the lot of fortune of Iran. And so um, uh, Iran has fated events, fated relationships uh, around Israel, um, and Israel has uh, um, uh, Israel is connected to literally the fate, the part of fortune um, of uh, Iran. So this is a very deep um, interlinking uh, that is happening between uh, these two nations. Uh, yes, the Pluto of Iran is eighteen degrees. It's malefic degrees, poisoning degree, and it's in the first house of Israel. In this way, um, Israel can feel uh, like empowered, uh, uh, power issue, but Israel has uh, Pluto in Leo. Um, and this Pluto would be uh, sextiling the Libra Pluto. And so we have a Pluto sextile relations. And so uh, the 1979 chart for Iran um, is actually sextiling the Pluto of Israel. Pluto is also nuclear energy. Um, and so um, that gives us good Pluto relations. Yes, Iran is a powerful authority uh, then can, that can also mitigate the power of Israel. So Israel does not become too powerful um, as a nation. So it doesn't have imperialistic um, aspiration but stays a nation more or less the size of uh, Israel. Um, this might sound weird to uh, kind of like the Palestinian ear, uh, but you must take into account that uh, uh, the, 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 from the astrological declaration of independence for Israel was from 49, 48, I'm sorry, 48. Um, and this were, these were uh, the borders. Um, and uh, what Palestinians got instead of a country is terror organizations or the PLO and later um, Hamas in hope that they would become an army um, uh, and that there is serious uh, Arab interest to keep Palestine from being. So, so the uh, um, resistance to the Palestinian state is coming also from Arab countries who don't want the co this coexistence at all. Um, and uh, yes, we also say if you listen to astrologers like Rasia tells you that in terms of the land, there is a history of people constantly fighting. Um, I don't know if there is land where it is different history, so I will be asking for Krasi and Lada to give us information uh, about this. Although if a person is born in the land, usually there is uh, reasons maybe to overcome this. Um, maybe to receive the spiritual information I receive when I am here and I'm broadcasting to you um, during a moment where, you know, kind of like any place we could, some rocket could hit a nuclear bomb and we can poof out, uh, more or less. Um, and in this moment, okay, I'm sharing to you the levels of analysis that are correct, that are relevant for the world, um, and, uh, and to share with you the information that uh, Iran and Israel actually have very good synastry together. Uh, also both in terms of the nuclear energy, so there's a nuclear balance between uh, Iran and Israel. When Iran has nuclear energy, 
there's a nuclear balance between Iran and Israel. It is a very strong force in Israel. When we talk about Israel that is uh, in relationship with the United States, we're talking about a balance between the East and the West, between, let's say, Russia and uh, the United States. So it's not something that's overly scary or overwhelming, but rather um, uh, uh, useful uh, for both nations to feel powerful, equally powerful, uh, and therefore desiring of peace uh, and not feeling overly threatened by each other. I guess Israel is not threatened by Iran, Iran is not threatened uh, by Israel. Uh, when it comes to infiltration of the sovereignty of these nations, um, then uh, what anybody in the nation must do is what I talked about previously with Spica and El Gol, uh, and this is what uh, uh, people and leaders and leaders must do. Okay, leaders uh, in here are sacrificed like people. Leaders in countries are sacrificed like people by these um, uh, um, super governmental uh, forces that is based on that which trust relies on betrayal and expandable children. It's a very rocky <laughs> type of trust. Um, Whereas the actual charts are um, uh, based, for example, Israel uh, son or Israel leaders uh, can even caretake for uh, Iranian people. Um, and Iranian people can provide for um, uh, solace. And you see a lot of the, uh, the times where uh, Iranian people who escaped the um, regime uh, of fundamentalism uh, are actually supporting Israel. I'm not talking about the Iranian people who are slaughtering the Kurds, not this type of Iranian people. Uh, so yes, don't let this mi be misconstrued. Um, and I support uh, the people of Kurdistan in their um, sovereignty. And they probably, uh, the more they treat uh, women better and give them sovereignty, this uh, is in their favor, um, both in the public eye, but also in general. Uh, and I have my series for astrological considerations of the four declarations of independence for um, Kurdis that want to um, uh, pick election uh, and want to review this. I'm not a big professional modern astrologer. I'm studying this myself, but these are the points that I pay attention to. Um, so I support uh, Kurdistan as well. And I support those secular Palestinians that are keep keeping to call for peaceful relationships, for uh, sovereignty of these two nations, for uh, um, the voices of Palestinian women to uh, be heard, to abolish honor killing, child brides, uh, expandable children across the board, as well as to abolish uh, kidnapping of children by the welfare worldwide, including Israel, medical welfare, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I stand with these voices. And, that, and to do this is very good for the sovereignty of uh, peoples, leaders, and nations. Um, this is, yes, more or less uh, what I have to say. Uh, again, there is more world peace than we know of. Um, uh, and, yeah, I also want to kind of give a side note. Um, the solar eclipses for 2027 are going to take uh, place in the north of Africa throughout the entire continent. Um, so we are expected to see a, a rejuvenation, renewal of uh, Africa and African nations, and perhaps more sovereignty in African nations. Um, it is suggestible that the countries uh, do this independently of 2030. Um, so as for Europe, I have to admit I did not see uh, throughoutly, so I don't know uh, what's with Europe. Um, I know there's something with Russia around 2030. So again, advisable for Russia to separate from uh, 2030. Uh, I don't know the Russian uh, chart. Um, the China 2035. Um, so it's probably going to be one of the last countries that 2030 is going to um, be enforced in, in other measures, um, but China has their own tradition of cultures uh, that we need to see. And right now we had the Nimvez, okay, the, the eclipses uh, on the X of United States. 
which talks about repent, repent, repentance, um, uh, and um, my uh, um, deepest prayers to uh, the people of United States. Um, I also listened to Lada Dunchevo, who said the United States is entering a um, 30 years of a spiritual uh, time where there can be division around spirituality, what you know, we saw spiritual warfare, um, or people say pick a side or something like that. Well, in both cases, whichever stream you are, if you are uh, is connected to the divine and secular, you know, um, in religion, then um, uh, adopting the compassionate nature of uh, Pisces, um, it might be less on the wealth side. So we might see United States not doing so well wealth-wise, while Africa is rising, um, and African countries. And again, for African countries, this is an area where um, I will look more into this area. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, Muammar Gaddafi, West uh, uh, in peace. And Gaddafi um, basically did a series of tremendous changes in Libya. He, want, he had a, a bank uh, that would give people zero interest loans, uh, the starting for cattle, um, uh, lowest gas prices ever, lowest food prices ever, good education, so many, many good things. The issue was that during the uh, Arab Spring, uh, there was uh, infiltration very likely of the uh, authority of Libya and there was use in Viagra to mass rape people. Viagra, by the way, in such cases when, when it's given such doses, it can cause heart attack. Uh, so if it would cause heart attack before a person rapes, it would be the best. <laughs> but, uh, but this is the situation for uh, uh, what was. Um, and then this is basically uh, how Gaddafi was also uh, unalived. And so I don't know how much of an infiltration of the sovereignty of, Libra, of Libya that was. Um, and Gaddafi is no longer, and Libya uh, um, you know, uh, has lost uh, the conditions that, that he had during his regime. Um, we might see more leaders tend to that. So I think an open declaration um, around uh, 2030 agenda, an open uh, refusal to uh, implement all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, torture and rape is the best, uh, to uh, abolish torture, abolish rape, uh, um, bloodline segregation, okay, abolish bloodline segregation, and to not be on par with the eugenics that ruins like every good piece um, would be appropriate. Um, uh, uh, relying on solar energy, because solar energy, its nature is such that, um, first of all, it's very appropriate for Africa, which is gold rich and soul rules gold. Well, we don't want the gold necessarily the, uh, taken out of the earth, but we actually want. Uh, the gold inside and reaching the forest and reaching the food which africa is known for is rich for um and a solar energy and so the country can be independent energetically rather than an exporter of goods so it can be an exporter of goods but it can be you know the african culture which is incredibly rich it's, um uh, north africa is is you know uh, in general, incredibly rich and uh, uh, very uh, not too reliant on on the oceans. I know it's next to the Mediterranean Sea, um, and uh, when it comes to like the air, uh, this is something that um, for the countries where it's appropriate, it's possible to develop certain technologies of. Um, protecting the air, protecting the sky. Um, not 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 to accept the 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 planes that spread the spreads toxin on the soil. Okay, Africa really needs sovereignty from 2030 agenda, but also to abolish any such thing, whether it's um, female and male genitalia mutilation, uh, uh, all the you know the children to have a childhood. It needs children to have a childhood. It needs willing consent, uh, both culturally. 
the right to exit finance and other cultures in Africa that are very compatible, even way more advanced than the West, where if a man beats his wife, he's exiled, so he's even taken like to um, another extreme. And so um, it's, it's really... Um, it's very appropriate, you know, for uh, Africa to uh, renew its power in a way that is not on par with colonialism and, and slavery and uh, invasion. And also remember, learn from the mistake for when African people enslaved um, uh, Western people or white people. And uh, this can literally terminate the cycle of slavery, enslavement, and make Africa um, for uh, um, aeons and aeons ahead sovereign, rich, wealthy, and a great place to uh, live in. Please, very important to not accept the toxins that's coming from the sky, pollution of the sky, all of these things uh, that uh, damage the soil. But to do this, the, all the teachings that are coming from uh, both men and women uh, uh, shamans or uh, healers, um, and deities are going to need to be implemented and Africa is the richest uh, except for Inuit the richest um, history uh, that teaches us so um, and of course any, uh, any sacrifice of human life of course to be abolished and this is coming from Africa okay to use hibiscus instead of sacrifice or blood sacrifice those practices are coming from Africa it will be up to Africa uh, to implement this in favor of uh, humanity, and it can withstand 2030. Uh, so all eyes on Africa towards 2027. Um, yes, as for the planes, there were some interceptions around uh, Syria. Uh, so I don't know what it means, because it just generally means you explode 50 kilos of bombs in the air and then let it drop uh, somewhere, so I, I have no idea. Um, and this is currently uh, kind of uh, the state of affairs. Um, this is a growing moon, so please, if you have people around the region that have a possibility to be uh, somewhere else, then uh, it's very important for, um, you know, what to take action and to prepare accordingly. Um, we are going to be having the retrograde soon, but Jupiter has only begun. Okay, Jupiter is basically right now opposing the Uranus of uh, Iran, um, the, but it will conjunct uh, Uranus and then continue to the 22nd degree. So very difficult. Um, Iran is going through its um, first Uranus opposition, so congratulations to Iran for making it to the first Uranus opposition. Um, it's a difficult, uh, yes, it's a difficult one when Uranus is in Scorpio, and indeed we see the importance of, um, you know, being done with policing with the way women dress and so on, and policing sexuality and all these things, or policing the women's voice. Uh, will not be appropriate um, to go through this uh, Uranus opposition. Uranus opposition can be civil war within Iran, which we see is taking place. Again, if we favor uh, um, being humane to all the population, men and women, and abolish, you know, honor killings, child brides, and all these things, then it will go successfully through its Uranus opposition. Uh, Iran has a great power to be a secular force in the Middle East, both by the powers of its people with an exalted Taurus moon. He has opposite Uranus, so people are independent and uh, can be, you know, rebellious. Um, uh, but also, um, you know, with its uh, uh, nuclear relations with Israel, so this balancing of the nuclear equation, um, and many, many other uh, things. So this is uh, a prayer and blessing for uh, a secular Iran uh, to rise and for uh, the, the rights of the people to be respected. There's a lot of potential in both these charts. And this is the same for Israel. 
Uh, Jupiter Uranus can be a secular revolution as well. Um, and can be undoing the 22, okay? So, um, to think about uh, these things is going to be uh, uh, very supportive. Um, and we have, we have power, we have sovereignty. We need to tend to it. We need to look at where are the points of interference. Um, and in this spirit, um, there can be denuclefication when we address our social problems um, and intend to them. So people would not want to just poof out. And so the, the solution that was invented, which was nuclear energy that poofs a lot of masses of people out, um, will no longer be uh, relevant uh, for use. It's not something unprecedented um, in history where we um, demilitarize uh, regimes uh, you see, you know it, it, the fact that the um, the joke around the Swiss Army was that they do pew pew they say pew pew instead of actually um, uh, shooting when they are doing uh, uh, trials uh, you know uh, training uh, for the army uh, is true <laughs> and uh, and Europe up until now and until the recruitment to NATO. Uh, was uh, very, very, very much demilitarized, um, and this can be. Uh, and uh, another thing we need to remember, if I mentioned Europe, that yes, those um, fundamentalist, okay, fundamentalist now is Islam, but it was Christianity, and um, those people that take like fundamentalistic Jews in the and say this is Jews. It's, no. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> it's not. Um, both on the religious and the secular, it's not. Um, uh, and so this is very important. It's also very important for humanity to understand that um, connecting with the divine is not becoming fundamental religion. Okay, To connect with God, and this is in the age where uh, sovereignty is so emphasized to connect with God, to connect with the divine is a spiritual practice. God or the gods, it's a spiritual practice. It's not something that um, a tradition alone is suffice. It's not something that, uh, and you know, and you also have this for Abrahamic religions in the Bible. Perhaps non Abrahamic uh, religions can say about. And traditions can say about their own examples where people would keep all the mitzvahs and would keep all the habits, but God would still strike and say, why? Because you, it doesn't help that you keep Shabbat if you violate women. It doesn't help that you keep Shabbat if you um, uh, are uh, malefic to one another. Okay, so the relationship and also in the fasts is important. The fast is you, you repent in the favor of God, but for the fasts to work, you actually, both in Islam and in Judaism, uh, you actually repent to the people themselves, okay? Because only that other person has, they have sovereignty. In the face of God, they have sovereignty. Why? Because they are divine, they are creation in the shape of God. And so, to embody the creation in the shape of God is understanding that our connection with God is before the rabbi, before the imam, before the priest. Okay, you don't come to the rabbi, to the imam, to the priest to uh, absolve yourself of the cre of the creation, uh, to absolve yourself of um, your spiritual practices, uh, but actually to enhance them. Just like you don't come to the uh, psychologist, to the astrologer, uh, and to the psychiatrist to absolve yourself of uh, sovereignty and autonomy, but actually to enhance your sovereignty and autonomy. And when we, the people, understand this, uh, then we understand that the calling to connect with the divine, and you can also be atheistic. Atheistic is not amoral, so atheistic uh, for you it would be maybe philosophical retreat, um, where you just think about things or reflect upon uh, your, your like your connection uh, and your philosophy and your worldview. Um, and yes, and also atheistic is not about absolving yourself from. Um, you know, your uh, decisions and your actions, uh, but actually enhancing your sovereignty. Um, 
And this is very useful for us to remember uh, because connecting with the divine is not about going to the imam or going to demonstrations or going to uh, keep more Shabbat or going to this or going to that or doing this. Shabbat. You know, if, if ever, then make charity. But make charity not just to the people of your religion. Uh, it's, very, it's also highly important, especially in times of war. Um, because when you give charity to people, even from other religions and from other cultures, then um, uh, you are informed, you could make connections uh, with these people and they tell you what's going on. Um, so charity is appropriate. Uh, time alone to rethink uh, is appropriate. Um, to reconnect with, with the divine in, in, in your personal way, rather than, or with your philosophy, if you're atheist, rather than ascribe to any uh, fundamentalist uh, religion um, that is taking away not only your freedom, but your very connection with the divine. And uh, therefore, uh, yes, tradition, religions can enhance the connection with the divine, or they can absolve it from you. Um, and God does not allow you to absolve yourself of this responsibility to not just follow the rabbi or follow the imam or follow the guru, um, but to uh, to be with the divine. Uh, and this is true uh, also to uh, multiple deities, religions, uh, that you have the altar where you sit. With, it's not the statue that matters, okay? Uh, but uh, the statue is a place for connection. Also in astrological talismans, you might not have the talisman, you might have the talisman, but it is the connection that you facilitate with the planets um, and, and with the world as you do so. So I hope this is useful. Um, I think I said uh, pretty much... A lot. I hope that a lot of people I know are going to be enraged and in fear and this and that. Um, and I hope I managed to give a little bit of breath of fresh air uh, to have some more grounding and centering and understand the level of analysis that we are in, but also the points of interferences that can actually enhance our sovereignty rather than take away. And this is also true to the nations involved, which is Israel, Iran. Palestine and the neighboring country, Syria, um, and Lebanon that has been trying to be sovereign from Hezbollah uh, for many, many years, and so um, and Jordan, and, and so on. Uh, and so my uh, deepest prayer for uh, the world right now. Um, for those of you who are Americans, I know you may have families or people that are in the region, um, because America is very highly involved. Uh, so my deepest prayers to you um, uh, uh, in this uh, region, if you have um, uh, natal charts, uh, then you want to understand which fixed star would be appropriate. So in general, for this region, our goal is appropriate um, to uh, give reverence to and speak up. Uh, Procyon, of course, is the great denuclificator. Um, Procyon is also very relevant for the chart of the United States. Um, so if you have like personal charts that you want me to take a look at, so you can uh, contact me on Twitter. It is Strudel Talishir. Um, uh, and this is only not to give you news. It's like, uh, will this person live or die? Don't do this. Uh, but more like what fixed stars are closest to this person's chart. that want, um, the, Or if you want to work on your chart, and you have family there, I will not charge you for this. Um, I cannot promise um, uh, like a quick reply. Um, <laughs> there are two packs of planes with 50 kilos bombs each sent um, away. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I will try to do my best. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but I am ready to look at charts uh, and tell you what fixed star is good for you to give reverence to and what properties are uh, good for this fixed star. Um, uh, and so it would be uh, for whether it's a person or a soldier that is in the region right now or uh, like for your family. Um, 
and fixed stars are usually very safe for for people if it's not maleficly aspected um, then it would be uh, appropriate and uh, I can do this also in texts so my twitter is strudel tali shir t-a-l-i s-h-r s-h-w-e-r uh, and you can just dm me I will not contact you uh, and I do not charge for this service so no money changes hands it's just um, uh, charity for uh, the people around that are uh, the families that are affected same if you have family uh, that is Israeli or Iranian or Palestinian uh, in the region uh, and I will try to go on uh, as many charts so I work with tropical zodiac um, and I would simply look uh, you would need uh, uh, yes a birth time is preferred if this doesn't exist then a birth um, uh, date uh, would be appropriate and then I can just uh, look it up and see what fixed stars are good for you to look at and what properties you want to um, uh, uh, pinpoint um, and uh, how uh, you can do this. So, um, yes, I hope this helps.